I don't think you're hooked up. Yeah, let's start. Ready, Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Ready? Good morning. Good morning. We're going to introduce a new song, so just, just please come in as you're able, and um, we're just going to go through it so you are familiar with the lip when we sing it during the service. Good morning and thank you. 
Uh, another way to get that Lord's Prayer ingrained into our heart. I think I'd still be in confirmation if me and Gary Ingstrom couldn't have sang the book to the New Testament uh, <laughs> instead of said that. Um, so some of us, uh, uh, a song helps us ingrain those words into our brain. Uh, please stand and share God's peace with one another. Good morning. Peace. Good morning. Peace. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning. Peace. So are we skipping Holy Roar? Or? He started without us singing Holy Roar, so now what? No. Oh, okay. Good morning. Oh, good morning. One yep. more song for us. Holy yep. Roar. Please join us together in Holy Roar. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are called to follow Jesus. Jesus. No, it will demand our dedication and our energy. It will change our whole lives. Come, all of you, come and learn of the Lord Jesus. One of the communion of the saints of all times and places, let us confess our sins against God and one, one another. O oh God, our merciful Redeemer, we confess the ways we live only for ourselves. We fail to see you in our neighbor's face. We turn our ears from voices that cry out. 
We pass by the hungry and oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive us our sin and strengthen us for service in all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ is given to die for you and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Blessed are you, rejoice and be glad, beloved people of God. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from Genesis chapter 50, uh, starting with the 15th verse. After Jacob's death, the brother, brothers of Joseph, Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. The reading begins. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave us instructions before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the, of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. I am I in the place of God, even though you intend to do me harm. God intended it for good in, to, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of our Lord. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 14, starting with the first verse. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here, Paul keeps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us and will judge each of us. The reading begins. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but do not, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to ju pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat, on, eat in honor of the Lord. Since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of our Lord. Please stand and join us. Yeah. 
Gospel reading for today, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 18, beginning with the 21st verse. Glory to you, Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For the reason of the kingdom of heaven may be compared to the king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought before him. And he, as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. The slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of the fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat and said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded on him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused and he went and threw him in prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that had taken place. Then the Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, our Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to everyone if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Do I have any helpers that want to come up today? Sometimes they hide in the balcony, but I don't see anybody up there either. Well, grace to you. Anybody? I thought I'd put some Kit Kats in the candy thing here. I think someone took them, though. They're gone. Uh, well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who calls and gathers us together on this day. We could have helped, had some help uh, describing two different rocks here uh, that I brought today, but we'll get to those in just a second. Um, I think this, this forgiveness thing that we're called upon to do today, is, it's a strange animal, isn't it? It's not, a, it's not something concrete and looks the same for each and every one of us. In fact, it's very different for each and every one of us. So when you hear those words, we are called to be forgiving of other people. Uh, it's new and unique just to us, isn't it? Um, and to think about our reaction sometimes, even to others uh, who are, you know, who, who who need forgiveness, but we wonder if they're if they're worthy of it, and those types of things. Uh, in the my research on this this last week, um, I looked at 
we came across a couple of different things. First was my reaction to two articles in the, I think it was in the Minneapolis Tribune on, uh, I think it was on Thursday. And uh, one of them was an article about a person who had committed some horrendous crimes, some horrendous things. And he wasn't, and the, the article was about the fact that he was going to get no jail time. And the family's reaction to that, and my own reaction to that was, what? You know, what is wrong here? Why is this happening? And I didn't read the whole article, um, but, you know, supposedly they were trying to describe why that was. Turn the pages, and somewhere in the paper uh, in that front seat section was about another person who had gotten 40 years, was going to prison for 40 years. And I thought, wow, those are really two odd things, aren't they? And it's just the way it made me think about that person. And I think, you know, and the, and the, and the families, too, that were connected. For the one, it was, they said it was going to be harder now to forgive that person if he didn't do some jail time. That that was part of the need of that person to forgive that person or to forgive that offender. The other person's family, well, they might have thought, well, 40 years. That's pretty much a lifetime for that person. And that person is being punished for what he did. And I just thought about my own reaction to those two things and how uh, forgiveness works and how, how our own brain works uh, in those reactions that we have then to sometimes people being punished uh, for their uh, sins against us, sins against others. The other thing I came across was in Desmond Tutu, if that name rings a bell for you, we haven't heard it now for a while, but he was an important leader uh, in South Africa during the time of reconstruction from apartheid into uh, a democracy in that country. And uh, he was a worker in the church and he was uh, put in charge of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, which instead of uh, just allowing that country just to go into complete chaos, they tried to uh, get both parties together and uh, bring the truth out, and then in the midst of that truth, have reconciliation. So the name, Truth and Reconciliation. He wrote a great book on forgiveness, and in that, he has a great exercise. And uh, I haven't gotten a chance to do it yet. And I, you know, you have excuse, I have a lot of excuses not to exercise, and uh, uh, even this little exercise, I have some good excuses that I haven't had time to do it yet. Uh, it was only on Thursday, right? Um, but he said to find a rock. So he's talking about us forgiving others, right? And in South Africa, that was for horrendous things, for horrendous things. Get a rock and carry it around with you for six hours, not for a whole day even, just for six hours. And I thought, well, that, you know, should try that. What's, what's his purpose? What's he going to get at in the rest of the book when he talks about this rock? But the first thing I did was I thought about, well, what rock, if I were going to do this exercise, what rock would I pick? And he just says, well, just pick an ordinary rock, you know, one that fits in the palm of your hand. But the first rock that came to mind for me it was a rock that I have sitting on a shelf at home. And um, it's a rock I found a couple of years ago when I was on my great-grandfather's um, uh, farm. And uh, I was trying to do some target shooting, and I set up a cardboard box. Some of you from North Dakota know the problem with that, right? The wind is going to blow that cardboard box away, right? I mean, in North Dakota was always windy. But so I had to find some rocks. Uh, in, uh, I was on a prairie trail, uh, and I know some, some of those were... I told uh, I was hunting with a young boy yesterday in youth season in North Dakota for deer, and I said, well, just over that knoll. And he looked, what's a knoll, you know? He spent his whole life in the Red River Valley. There are no knolls. <laughs> but a prairie trail in North Dakota is just a, on, you know, an unimproved road with weeds growing up in the middle of it. And that's where I was. And I was picking up some rocks to set on top of my cardboard box. And I picked this one up and set it on my box. And then when I was done and going to walk away, I took a look at it. And it's a skinning tool. Um, it's a Native American 
uh, made who knows how long ago, right? And it wasn't unusual to find it where I found it uh, on my grandfather's, this was my great-grandfather's farm, but on my grandfather's farm just a few miles away. I grew up with uh, uh, teepee circles in his pasture. So we knew that Native Americans had lived uh, in that area for many, many centuries before my family came there. But I thought, this is a rock that I would put in my hand. If I were going to take that exercise of Desmond Tutu and hold a rock for six hours, it would be this one. For several reasons. Usually our sins, the, the, sin, the, the people we need to give, forgive, are usually part of our history. Right? They're, 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 they're people in our, I don't have to forgive anybody in Chicago, but neighbors and friends, sometimes those are the people, and family, those are the people that I need to forgive usually, right? Sometimes I have to forgive a system, a justice system that says this person gets no jail and this person gets 40 years, you know, um, but, you know, those things happen. Or those, things ha or those things need to be forgiven sometimes too, but usually it's one-on-one, -on -one. it's part of our history. Uh, so I, probably, I thought, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna, I would hold this rock in my hand, and I would do that for a reason. Some, for one reason, it's got some weight to it, and that's, I think, part of Desmond Tutu's uh, exercise, that we're going to feel that rock in our hand, that it's going to have some, that, that forgiveness that we need to give another person can weigh us down right, can weigh us down. And that, I think, one of the reasons, one of the biggest reasons that God calls us to be forgiving is that, right? That sin, that sin that's been done against us can weigh us down, and by forgiving it, we let, let go of that load, right? We let go of that load. But this rock has a few other, te or a few other characteristics. That's the reason I picked it. It's got a sharp edge to it. Who knows how many hundreds of years ago this was made, but it still has that sharp edge. It's been farmed over for a hundred years. It's been driven over. It was on that prairie trail, but it still maintained that sharp edge. And we think about sometimes sin does that. It maintains that sharp edge for generations, right? And sometimes we even need to forgive people who are no longer even with us. Bishop Foss, who was a bishop in eastern North Dakota, told the story about after the flood in Grand Forks, he was talking with a woman, and she said, I am so angry at my husband. That sometimes happened to us, right? You know, we know, right? You know, Bishop Foss knew exactly what she's talking about. And he's like, oh, you know, what did he do? What did he do? And I'm just so angry with him. And, she said, and he said, well, what? What did he do? He died. He died, right? And now she's got to clean up after this flood by herself. And she had, to, she had to forgive him at some point, right? But so sometimes even, those, even that history comes back at us and we need that forgiveness along the way. But to think about that, I remember a, a lady in, in uh, Blanchard, uh, North Dakota, too, that was just angry at her husband. Same reason. She had to put up the Christmas. She says, I hate Christmas. i got to put all those Christmas lights up by myself now. Um, but to think about that, sometimes that forgiveness goes back into our history a long time, doesn't it, that we need to, uh, and that sharp edge continues to cut, continues to cut. So that's one reason I would choose to hold this rock for those six hours in that uh, exercise to become a more forgiving person. The other thing I might, uh, about this rock is that it, that sharp edge can do something else, can it? It can separate. And I was thinking about people who, I, I butcher fish. Most people wouldn't use that word about cleaning fish, but that's what I use. I've seen other people who can fillet fish out just beautifully, and they have a sharp edge and they separate, right? The meat, and there's no bones and there's no skin and none of that. Sometimes we have to separate things. And one of the things we talk about in forgiveness is separating the sin from the sinner, right? 
the sin from the sinner. And sometimes that's easy to see how that needs to happen and done. Other times it's not. Uh, we have a new staff person on our synod staff that's coming, working with Eastern North Dakota and Northwest uh, Minnesota. And uh, her first call as a pastor was at the detention center in Bismarck, North Dakota. And every day she had to help kids understand there's a difference, isn't there, between sin and sinner. And then we have to separate those one time and convincing those kids that they were forgiven and that they could move out of that detention center at some point uh, and, and, and uh, lead a new and different life. It's amazing that that's what the Lutheran church, that we find the Lutheran congregation right there in that detention center. But there's another one in a prison in South Dakota too that separates those things. And you need a sharp edge to do that, don't you? And this stone still carries that sharp edge. So as we think about that today, think about our own need to forgive others and why it's to take maybe that sharp edge off, right? It's to help do that of sin. It's also to help us to, um, to kind of delve in and to keep those relationships. And who are we going to have to forgive this week? Probably somebody we know rather well, right? I'm going to have to forgive my brother this week. This is more information uh, than you probably need. Um, but this week, on Wednesday, it's public knowledge, it's out there in the advertisements, uh, my brother is going to sell a piece of land that's been part of our farm. And if it were just that, if it was just a piece of land that my dad had bought in the 1990s when he was expanding, hoping that one of us would farm with him, I would... It wouldn't mean anything. But it's a piece of land that our great-grandfather in 1890s, late 1880s, homesteaded. He died just a few years after that, and we always assumed that our great-grandmother just walked away. What did she walk away from? A sod house. You know, it wasn't hard to walk away, probably, from a sod house and, and nothing else there. No trees, no nothing in the eight, late 1800s. But she didn't she was able to fulfill the requirements of that homestead and that land went into her name and it wasn't sold until she died just a few you know you think back at that time how the the simplest things would take your life right uh, she died uh, just a few years later and then that land was sold and in the 1990s my dad almost uh, 90 years later my dad was able to buy that land back not at the same price but uh, <laughs> buy that land back and uh, you know, kind of reclaim that homestead. And on Wednesday, it gets sold. Um, and I, I, I just have to walk away from that, right? And say, there's about a one in a hundred chance that I'll be able to uh, retain that. Not a good chance at all. So when, that, when that's finally done and said and done, it's gone, I have to forgive my brother for that, right? that he did that. Why did he do it? Well, he's got good reasons. That, doesn't, that part doesn't matter, but it's still in my heart that I have to do that. I have to do that if I'm gonna maintain that relationship with my brother, right? So as we think about that today, think about you know, what's gonna to happen to you this week that you need to forgive, and how will you do that? How deep will that cut, like this stone could still cut today? How deep will that cut? Will it be something that brings up, you know, previous sins and all of those things that we have to forgive? Or we start that process of forgiving? Or will it be something that's easy to forgive that day uh, because we know the situation, etc.? But to think about that, what's your stone look like that you might carry for six hours? Does it have a sharp edge on it? Uh, does it fit into your hand? amazing how well uh, my wife says it fits into a woman's hand and if you watch dancing with the bulls you know that the women were the ones uh, that skinned out the buffalo so she's probably uh, right about that but does that can that stone also at the same time when it's grown to f been worked and worked and worked to fit right in your hand can you also leave it behind can you also just drop it Drop it and walk away. Not easy, is it? What God is calling us to do this day is not easy. That's to forgive others. But why is he calling us to do? Well, thousands of years later, after Joseph's been his brothers forgive one another, we come to find out 
that medical science can prove that being a forgiving person makes you more healthy. It gives you that abundant life, that abundant life that Jesus Christ wants us to have. He doesn't do it just to, just to irritate us and make us do things. Uh, he does it so that we can have an abundant life. He calls us to do that and wants to give us that abundant life. Amen. Please stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer. It's yours. We join together as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. It will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Are you ready for this? I got another new address for Steve Clem. Ready to write it down? 33376 North Pickerel Drive. Hey, that's his home address, right? <laughs> so, yes. And, uh, uh, yeah, Steve is home, so that is good, good, good news uh, to remember to keep, continue to keep him in our prayers uh, as he recovers from home, and uh, hopefully he can soon join us. Other people in our prayers, just a, a, a friend of our congregation, uh, Nicole, Nicole Johnson, um, Nicole Johnson, and uh, others who uh, we need to remember, the people of Libya in flooding and the northeast uh, uh, part of our country uh, in hurricanes and for harvest and all of those things. Things coming up to be aware of, uh, next Sunday is the studs for uh, Buds for Studs Sunday. Baked potatoes and all that uh, fundraiser for the Jamaica trip. Uh, making lefsa next, not this Monday, but next Monday. Quilting starts this Monday though, right? Quilters are gonna be here on Monday, this Monday. They get next Monday off to make lefsa. Annual Fall Supper here uh, next Wednesday on the 27th. If you need practice for that, Eagle Lake is this Wednesday. Um, Confirmation Sunday School, I try to get that going in two weeks. We need Sunday School teachers. Why do we need Sunday School teachers? Because our kids uh, that come to Sunday School need a variety of faith stories to hear. Uh, and your faith story uh, might be the one they need to hear. We have some short-term opportunities. We can work around your schedule. If you could teach for a month, whatever that might be, uh, please let us know. Uh, but we'll get Sunday School going again uh, and work towards that. And those, um, uh, we need, we need teachers for that reason, for that reason, uh, to, to let those faith stories that you have uh, be heard. Looking for a leader for helping hands, uh, need someone just for that, and we'll talk more about that uh, at the annual meeting, which is following this uh, worship service today in uh, the fellowship area. So please come and stay for the annual meeting. You can take a look at the things that are coming up uh, for adult forms in October, uh, great programs coming up for that. Um, and the one that's just added to that was a member of the school board here at Battle Lake uh, coming to talk about the new school referendum, referendum that will be on October 15th. Any other announcements? Anything that I missed? Oh, right. Yes, thank you. Yep. So, yep, yep. Don't drive in the parking lot there for a couple of days. I know it's in here somewhere. All right. Anything else? Any other announcements? All right, well, let's um, join together in receiving our offering and continue with Holy Communion.
Let us pray for the whole people in God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we begin with a prayer of thanksgiving today for Steve Clem that your Holy Spirit has held him steady, that you have held him in the healing hands of your son, Jesus Christ, that you have surrounded him uh, with those who have the skill and talent to bring healing. We ask that you would continue to be with him as he recovers at home, that your Holy Spirit continue to uphold him, that your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior and great physician, continue to heal him. And for others whom we name in our hearts, for Nicole and others who are in need of your healing hand, that you would continue uh, to bring that into the world. People here and people uh, in our families and others who are in our, on our minds today, that your Holy Spirit would be with them, that your great physician, Jesus Christ, your son, would also be present in their lives. We pray for the people around the world, natural disasters that we hear about now, it seems, each week, earthquakes and now flooding, hurricanes hitting the East Coast. We ask that your Holy Spirit would be with those who have lost everything, that your Holy Spirit would be present, but also that you would use the world the world and its resources to come to these people's aid and that we would bring them and give them the hope, the hope that they can move on, the hope that uh, your son Jesus Christ is present with them. Your Holy Spirit gives them power. We pray for our schools and we continue to pray for students who continue to, uh, to attend schools and those uh, who mourn. Uh, a bus accident uh, where no students were, in, were, were uh, lost their lives but others did, that your Holy Spirit would comfort and strengthen them and those students who are still uh, recovering uh, from physical ailments, that your Holy Spirit would be with them, bless them, and heal them. We ask all this in your name, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Please stand as we continue with Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the forgiveness of sins in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. Everyone uh, who believes that Christ is present in this bread and wine uh, is welcome at the Lord's table. Please be seated and follow the uh, usher's instructions forward.
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you have fed us. Fed us with wheat that became bread, grapes that became wine. Fed us, fed us to be a part of your uh, family, your family that we are forgiven, that we can go out into the world and forgive others and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Give us the power to do that through your Holy Spirit. Give us the power to do that within our own hearts. Amen. Our benediction will sing together. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you. May he go behind you to encourage you. Beside you to be With angels and the same.